Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Triple Option. I want to give a shout out to all you guys out there in YouTube land, wherever you get this info. We're happy to be back for you. The boys are back. My mustache is back. And we're going to be going over some some hot, some hot action. <laughs> Sounds so strange. Go over some hot football action of the Florida State Seminoles. Uh, going to be going over some QB, some QB film, just kind of prognosticating what uh, Florida State's 2021 offense could look like based on who's under center. So we're back. Florida State's back in recruiting. It's very hot on the trail. We'll talk about that. But first, I talked enough. Coach, say what's up to the people. What's up? people <laughs> uh, question mark at the end very inquisitive <laughs> an inquisitive coach ab kevin say what's up to the people as well how's it going people <laughs> oh you, you're a little bit more amped because we're talking quarterbacks right uh, i love right talking quarterbacks wheelhouse. yeah <laughs> yep. when, when we when we talk about the fullback position that's when adam's gonna have that same level of uh, the, the fullback position boyish <laughs> giddiness <laughs> oh enough with this quarterback nonsense give me wing t give me the Pound the rock. I'm very, yeah. <laughs> Pound the rock. So I'm excited. Shout out to all you guys. Special shout out to New Japan Pro Wrestling English commentator, uh, Kevin Kelly, who shouted me out on the first round of the New Japan Cup. So, uh, Kevin, I know you're watching. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Also, shout out Mackenzie Milton's family because you're also our biggest fan. So, mahalo, aloha, and kornaliki. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Do we have like this secret like sector of seminal fan base server in Japan? I think that we are the most popular YouTube film breakdown show in Japan that focuses solely on Florida State football, bar none. We have the market cornered. It's Excellent. all because of my guy, Cade Dog. So all one. Excellent. That's right. They know. Well, they know quality. And speaking of quality, before we get into the recru- before we get into the quarterback stuff, let's briefly talk about Florida State's recruiting class. They picked up a five star. They have multiple five stars in a class for the first time. In a very long time. Not good with numbers. Um, They're currently the number ninth ranked 2022 class in the entire country. Everybody that's above them has more than six commits. That's the total number except for Oklahoma. So Florida State, they're they're rocking at a 92.33 average. So that means that that's a four-star average. Two five-stars, Travis Hunter and Sam McCall, who just committed today, and a whole bunch of other guys that are very impressive. Adam, you first, then Kevin. We'll get some brief thoughts on um, what's happening. Good things are happening. How do, it, it feels strange. Yeah, it's it's really neat. Um, you know, I think that uh, they spent a lot of time in 2021 really focusing on these, or I'm sorry, 2020 focusing on these 2022 recruits. That's right. a lot of numbers. Um, so I think they spent a lot of time trying to focus on those relationships and trying to make sure that they hit 2022 on, you know, with their feet on the ground, just running as fast as they can, trying to get the momentum that they could heading into the, into the season. Um, you know, we're early in, early in the year, obviously, you know, not going to be March 1st tomorrow. So you got a long time. You got to keep hold of these guys, but it's a hell of a start for a class that, uh, you know, coming off of 2021 that was obviously subpar at best, but you took limited high school kids knowing, I think, that you were establishing relationships with with these guys, and we're going to load up this year. And it's definitely a recruit-by-committee approach. If you look at Sam McCall's interview today, he mentioned that he didn't really – he couldn't tell you who his primary recruiter was because the entire staff was on him. So they've been building relationships. Like you said, a couple years ago it was with these kids. They're sending out 2024, 2025 offers to like eighth graders. It's ridiculous. (laughs) That's high school recruiting. But um, it's it's good stuff. What do you think, Kevin? What do you you think about what's going on recruiting? I don't even know if you like – do you like recruiting? I don't. I don't follow it terribly closely. I'm sure. You have to pretend. You have to pretend. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm on the beat. I've got to. I've got to be yeah, that guy. Beat. Yeah. Whatever. Um. So. <clears throat> yeah. No. I think. I think it's just a. You can see Norvell's plan and how organized he is and how structured he is, and there was that like article that came out that ranked him below, uh, several other coaches, uh, in Florida in fourth recruit- in the state. That was in right. recruiting yes. prowess, but I. I think that um, recruiting is as much the the first thing the first most important thing is how much money you're going to put into it, and the second most important thing is how much time and planning you're going to put into it. 
and I think he's definitely got that second part covered. Uh, whether that first part is covered is up is up to the rest of us. But um, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna <laughs> say we have all the dark money now, and I love it. Launder all your money through Florida State. <laughs> We're fans of that. So it's good stuff. Kevin mentioned the article. You have when you hear praise from a guy like Steve Wiltfong, who's 24/7 Sports Director of National Recruiting, saying that he believes that Mike Norvell is the best recruiter in the state of Florida. That'll make you that'll make your eyes open a little bit because that's how we we basically everybody wrote that off as uh, Norvell's weakest suit coming in to his tenure as the head coach of the Florida State football Seminoles. Now, to hold this recruiting class together, they're going to have to not suck <laughs> as much on the field. <laughs> and a big factor in them not sucking is who is going to play quarterback. So we're coming in. We're going to be looking at Florida State's potential three options to be the quarterback of the 2021 Florida State football team. You've got UCF grad transfer, Mackenzie Milton, the guy who's pretty much the odds-on favorite. This has been said that it's going to be a open competition. I think it'll be, but Mackenzie Milton's the odds-on favorite. Then you've got just explosive athletic dynamo Jordan Travis coming back. I believe that even if Jordan doesn't win the job, he is going to be um, ingrained in the offense next year as he should. He's a dynamic athlete. Then we've got Adam Brown's favorite. We've got, he's going to be a freshman again, uh, Chubba Purdy. So we're going to, today we're going to analyze what parts of Norvell's offense are going to be emphasized depending on who's the quarterback at the time. And I do want to think that even though McKenzie Milton is the favorite, He's coming off a devastating leg injury. Jordan Travis, who's also a threat to win the job, was hurt multiple times last year. So de depending on who wins this job, you're still going to see more than one of these guys throughout the entirety of the year. Do you guys agree with that? Oh, 100%. And so I, it's best to know them all. Go ahead, Kevin. I was, I was going to say, like with, with a guy like McKenzie Milton, he's – He's not the future of your program. And so at a certain point in a season that we don't expect to win a national championship, you start working in other people, even if he is the starter. Interesting. Good. Very good point. Very good point. It's a one-year rental. So without further ado, let's get into it. And as we, as we break down the film of each potential starting quarterback, I also want to break down for the people what parts of Norville's offense are going to be emphasized depending on uh, the player that we're looking at. Yeah, because each guy's going to bring something different, right? I mean, with Milton, you're probably looking at more RPO with with some your shorter passing game. Uh, with Travis, you're looking at the looking at the run game stuff that we've seen in the past, and then with a guy like Chubba, you're definitely going to be looking at a little more stretch kind of passing game. Not to kind of jump ahead there, but just I like it. No, no, no. We got to tease them. Let them know. Let them know what we're looking. And, for. and look, I mean, we're we're not going to cover Tate Rotomaker in this in this video. We don't. We, you know, we're not trying to be disrespectful to that young man, but we don't consider him to be a real threat for the job, right? I mean, going into going into this year, we still feel like he's a developmental guy that that's probably going to need a few more years on campus before he kind of reaches his ceiling and is really a name in the game, right? I mean. Yes, I agree. How do you feel, Kevin? I see a dour look on your face when we talk about Tate being a non-factor for next year. Are you taking that news well? I feel like it's a fairly uh, logical take. Yeah, no, I, I think I think if Tate's an impact guy, he's going to be an impact guy down the road. Um, yeah. And at the end of the day, I think I think Tate's future, um, based off what, everything we've seen, is potentially as a guy that uh, can give you veteran minutes when you need it when he is a veteran. And Unfortunately, he won't be next year, so hopefully we won't need his services quite yet. <laughs> well, hopefully, right. he's when, a, hopefully he's a stud and blows yeah. up and, and throws for 4,000 passing yards next year and wins a Heisman. I mean, that'd be great, but that's just kind of our stance on things. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, When he is going to be ready, Kevin, when it is, his name will be called, I'm sure he's going to be spectacular. I'll or be else you will look fan. like a fool. I know you will. I know you will. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. I'm interested. So I who love we, QB talk. Who are we trying to let's start with? Let's do McKinsey. Today? Let's do let's do Pineapple Man. Give the let's people what they want. Give the give the Miltons our biggest fans. All right. So here's the highlight. Oh, tape. looking great already. Yeah, I love highlights. They're good for uh, the slow brain people like myself. 
Yeah, I was not going through all his film and old <laughs> UCF games and pull and play. I'm like, nope. So McKenzie can push the ball vertically, but you said, Adam, that we think the RPO and the, the quick passing game concepts are going to be the stuff that are his bread and butter if he wins the job at Florida State. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's where you have to start. I mean, look, all these guys are going to be asked to do multiple things, but the strength of his game is going to be putting the ball in the belly of the running back and getting it out quick. I mean, you see it there on some play action stuff, but we know Norvell likes to run RPOs. We know he, he and Kenny um, believe in that stuff. So I think that what we saw last year was a couple of quarterbacks who couldn't get the ball quite as quite as uh, quick as you'd like for some of this RPO stuff. And sure. we've, seen, we've seen it with James Blackman over the last few years. And then, you know, Jordan's kind of got a, a, a very methodical delivery and Chubbles is a little bit long. So I think that the, the pace at which he can throw the ball and, and the speed that he gets it out of his hand is important. And it's really a strength of his game. I also say disregard a lot of the QB runs that we're looking at right now, <laughs> or at least shave off about 20 yards to each of them. And like you said, it, it's it's going to be something where he's going to look to stay in the pocket and make the quick read just because he's not going to have the mobility to escape the pocket immediately like a Jordan Travis could. So it'll be interesting. It'll be, it'll be quite a visual difference from what we saw with Jordan Travis at the helm. Kevin, what, what do you think about McKenzie Milton's game and, specific plays concepts that Norvell's going to use with him yeah so we've we've talked about McKenzie a fair amount on on this channel there's a solo video I did and we did a full triple option on it before um, so if you want more of that um, go check that out but uh, to me I think what McKenzie brings is an anticipation he might not have the strongest arm in the world but he can take the top off a of defense because he's throwing that ball um, in stride he knows where to put the ball he knows pre-snap where to go he can read a defense um, and so he makes up for a lot of you know he's a, he's a six foot tall division one quarterback that's found a lot of success so that means you have to be able to do the intangibles you have to be able to do the little things you have to be accurate you have to be uh, knowledgeable about defenses knowing where to put the ball knowing how to lead a receiver um, and knowing how to throw the ball before the receiver breaks. So I, I think he does the intangibles really well. I agree with that. And I, I think you can see from every – and we've got all the Milton content that your heart could your heart could desire. You can watch McKenzie Milton till your eyes bleed on this channel, and you should because it's good for everybody. Subscribe to X's and O's YouTube, by the way. But uh, something that always strikes me when I watch Milton – is the loft and the touch on his balls, specifically the deep balls, right? Not a lot of lasers, but everything's like perfectly just lofted in the bread basket. So you get some nice yards after catch. I think that's going to help out a lot in Orville's offense. One might say he has hand talent. <laughs> is that one yeah. you? Is that, no. is that like the new draft buzzword? Oh yeah. You know, okay. Always, I like that. That sounds always. funky. Yeah. He sounds what like he's a magician. Hand yeah. and talent. What's hand talent? I don't know. I did. I'd never heard of it before. Uh, before you said anything, let's move on to Jordan Travis. One, a guy, a guy that I, a guy that I feel for. And like every time he was getting hit at the end of the year last year, I felt his pain because <laughs> that kid is tough. He is dynamic. He is exciting. And I think that even if he doesn't win the starting quarterback job, you're going to see Jordan Travis on the field every single game in some way. Definitely. Did, did we not want to uh, show some of some more of what we thought Milton might uh, become in the Norvell offense? Do we have those clips? Because if so, erase everything I just said about Jordan Travis. This is a Hall of Fame level tease. I'd actually Let's, pulled. I'd actually yeah, pulled. Yeah. What do you got? Second drive from GT. Yeah, GT, we've we've got that coming I up. It was a, I actually thought it was a decent. Uh, so that so what what do you have? You have the the second drive from Georgia to stuff that we did against Georgia Tech that you think is really going to be inside McKenzie's wheelhouse. Yeah. All right. Let's see it. All right. So yeah, I mean, so oh, I, I think the biggest thing the biggest thing that um, you know McKenzie's going to bring is he's going to be able to run the whole playbook, uh, and I think. You know, you saw a limited playbook with James, but on these scripted drives, you've really got to see a glimpse of them being multiple. You saw multiple formations. You saw multiple looks with the run game, with screens, with throwing the ball. It was stuff they had practiced, and I think that that's one of the areas that McKenzie's going to help you out the most. Um, I just want to say on this play, I watched it earlier, a, a competent block right here um, 
but I think this is Warren Thompson on this safety coming over here leads mm-hmm. to a touchdown. Yeah. Just an amazing scripted play. See so right here. He's, yeah, he's, he's looking in the wrong place. Uh, and that yeah, slows him uh, down, and then he gets caught uh, from behind. It's a huge, okay. <laughs> huge thing right there. <laughs> yeah, let's see a lot less of that next year. But it is, it, you're right, man. Having a, a veteran quarterback that, that gives you all the variety that, that's a hallmark of Norvell's offense. And we're going to have so many playmakers. Just Lawrence Toafili with another year in the weight room, man. I'm very excited about that. You yeah, come think, out with a screen. You know, you come out with a screen game. Sorry, Kev. Go ahead. I said I think it's going to be huge that we have a stable of receivers that that c- catch the ball consistently. Yeah, they're <laughs> going to be young. I mean, they're they're unproven, but. And you'll get less yeah. of this. What what James yeah. is really bad at is anticipating throws. Yeah, I, I think you're right. There hasn't been too many times. Well, there was one time when he threw it to I think it was Cam McDonald in this in this game. I think it was on the first drive. I can't think of many other times where James Blackman like threw the ball open. Oh, Wait, threw the back shoulder? Yeah, yeah, it was great, man. I, the, the, I, I bought in at that point because it was such an impressive <laughs> throw. But my, my God, was that the exception and not the rule? <laughs> but imagine a competent quarterback. And now you know, and I don't want to bash James, but imagine no, no, a competent no, no, quarterback no. out here. You've run a screen, you you run screen game. Now you've got play action to a screen. I mean, you're just getting so many different looks that you're hoping a, um, you know, a legit quarterback can get you in in and out of throughout the game and and just help you be more successful. Right. And the name of the game is getting the defense on their heels, right? Because even though the yeah. offensive line is going to be better than last year with another year under Atkins, it's still not going to be the strength of the team. So anything yeah. you can do to instill just uh, just some, some hesitation in the defensive line is going to help. Here's run game checks. You know, these are the areas where – we're not going to, I mean, we're not going to know it. We, I think that we can probably see some of it, but we're not going to know it all the time that, that yeah. McKenzie's going to get you. And he talked about it at his presser that the pre-snap stuff is where he feels like he's going to bring the most to the team. You know, here's five wide. I mean, these are just areas that McKenzie's going to excel. Yeah, they're going to find matchups. They're going to find matchups. Yeah, they're going to find matchups for him. They're going to let him, you know, pick a defense apart. I mean, look, you've got an X receiver, Terry, sitting in the slot. That's where he's looking. Immediately to Terry. He's got a right, one-on-one no against other. the safety. He's looking for that. Mackenzie Milton, that's his throw, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you saw yep. it in the highlight tape. That That's one that he drops right, just yep. right down I mean, look, the he, basket. They're gonna, they're probably going to draw it over me. I haven't gotten to this. But you have Terry, who's traditionally an X receiver. He normally goes out here. You got him running a, a fade because you know you have man coverage. And Georgia Tech didn't switch. Their, their corner is going to be better at this man coverage on this faster guy and it's it's a great play call but it's one that's yep. ultimately missed this is what norvell does against man coverage and it, it's also what scott frost did at man against man coverage at ucf ah oh, yeah man better throwing ball that's that, that yeah, it's, tough. it's touchdown yeah that should be six that's two plays on this tr- <laughs> oh that's frustrating to give man. it to james that's he did get eight yards on that play that we talked about um potentially yeah, and it's like I said, this isn't a crap on James Blackman to make the other guys look better. That kid, yeah. that kid had so many issues as far as with his development starting and stalling. But oh, you could see a Mike Norvell offense that can use all of the playbook, that can take advantage of all the flexibility he has based on what the defense is showing him. That's a dangerous Mike Norvell offense. That's that's where you start to get. Um, early 2010 like Jimbo Fisher vibes as far as like what the offense can do based on who they're faced and how flexible it is. Just not, just not stuck in a rut because your quarterback can't handle things. I mean, exactly. That's where they were all year. Yeah. Every time James dropped back to pass, he wasn't looking to throw it. He was hoping to do that. Yep. Just cause he, he, he just wasn't comfortable throwing to a guy that wasn't open. And at this level, yeah. that's just yep. not going to happen. Agreed. So we got an injury. All right. We can jump. We can yeah. jump forward. Get back into so Jordan. That, gi- that gives you the idea. Throwing receivers open, quick decisions, variety of formations, variety of play types. Uh, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get more access. You're going to get less athleticism, but you're going to have more access to the playbook. Mm-hmm. And that's why we think Mackenzie Milton is the leader in the clubhouse at this point. Yeah. But let's go to Jordan Travis. Let's do the payoff for the tease. Mr. Electricity, 
Let's see. Because like I said, this guy's going to be on the field no matter who the starting quarterback is. Yeah, I agree. He has to play, right? I mean, I don't care where it is. I, I would be very disappointed. I don't know if the, Norvell's got a history of being able to interchange skilled dudes in a slot, whether they're receiver, running back, whatever. And th- yeah, J- Jordan Travis screams slot athlete to me all day. With, I'm sure there'll be some trick plays where he throws the ball because he didn't have a terrible arm. I hope I hope he stays. I, I'll just say that. I hope he stays. Mm, yeah, fair enough. You know, I, I mean, think Jordan Travis, his, his throwing really doesn't seem too terribly off from being serviceable with how good of his his running is. I think you can have special. a special uh, an elite offense with Jordan Travis behind center at the college level. Personally. Sure, I I agree with that too. And it, it's it it's just you, you saw the limitations near the end of the year as yeah. far as the things that deep defenses could take away and we were really hamstrung. Ah, oh, but god, he is special, man. And, and I thought, and to his credit, he re, he read the triple option stuff in the RPOs pretty well, you know. He I just don't think. Decisions. Yeah, I just don't think the the reads and the amount of decisions he was asked to make were as. It wasn't a lot. I think they kept yeah. it pretty simple. Yeah, I would tend to agree. They put they probably had not even a quarter of the playbook in. Which is insane. Well, that's, I mean, we only, we only won three games, so maybe it's not that insane. Yeah, I mean, it's probably not all on him. I mean, it's on COVID and missing, you know, all, a lot of different reasons. The offensive line, but uh, you know, we know what Jordan can do. He's a, he's an elite runner. He's an elite runner. We saw them use him uh, in the Miami game in some package stuff. Even if McKenzie's the, the starter, you, you've got to get those legs on the field. I mean, yep. you, and I think you have to get them on the field at quarterback. You've got to give them a chance to touch the ball. I agree with that. And I, I don't think that's something that it's not going to be like a two quarterback system, but like every fourth or fifth series, will they work like a Jordan Travis? And I could totally see that, especially depending on who they're playing against on the deep. Mike Norvell is nothing if not creative. Yeah. But um, so if Jordan Travis does win the job, we expect. A lot similar to what 2020 was with better receiver play because Jordan Travis got no help last year just at all. The receivers were atrocious halfway through the season. We we're having roster purges and just in influx of people who's staying, who's playing, who's suspended, who's not all that stuff. So Jordan Travis was not done any favors, but we think Kev, if Jordan Travis wins the gig, it's going to be very similar to what we saw last year. What, what, what things are going to be a little bit different though, in your opinion? I think they, so when you take last year into consideration, you have a shortened spring on a first year coach and you're given Jordan Travis and James Blackman. And you're saying, make an offense that fits both of them. So and Travis was hurt. Travis was hurt too. Mm-hmm. So he didn't even get a full spring. Right. So probably most of the offense was put in for James Blackman. Um, And so. But but either way, you're not going to be able to put in a deep offense on on for either guy. I think um, moving forward, you can you can see McKenzie Milton, Chuba Purdy, uh, Jordan Travis, or all these kind of t- dual threat guys. I mean, it, it remains to be seen how much McKenzie has left of him left in him of that. But um, I I think that you're going to see a lot more of the, more diversity you're going to see more rpos you're going to see more of those quick games to get the ball out of their hand whether it's mckenzie or jordan travis or chubba purdy um uh but i i do think jordan travis is by far the best athlete on the field he's just not going to take the top off like like mckenzie milton can or or chubba purdy can right now segueing into chubba purdy i have a feeling that if chubba ends up starting there was a lot of things that happened on the field, but he still, it's only one or two. It's it, <laughs> with the luck that we've had on the field. It's not with, it's not outside of the realm of possibility mm-hmm. that Chubba Purdy, we no. see him on the field this year. Like we saw him last year. So Adam, your guy, <laughs> your Chubbs, your captain Chubbs here on, on, on the podcast, on mm-hmm. the, on the video show. What? Is Chubba Purdy running a Mike Norvell offense going to look like? What do we see a ton of? I think it's just going to be a lot of, of stretching the field vertically. I think that they're they're going to want to push the ball with him. Um, I, it's okay. I think it's going to be like a levels. So they're going to want to really try to stretch the get get those levels down the field 
Uh, mm-hmm. We've seen a lot of flood concepts. We've seen a lot of levels concepts with them. Um, they're going to want to be able to attack all three, all three layers of the defense. You know, the the flats, the uh, deep the, or the outs. You know, that that ten yard to fifteen twenty yard uh, area, and then deep down the field. I, I just think that's the strength of his game. I think he's got the arm for it. Um, you know, they're going to want to spread spread you out and let him run. We saw a lot of that last year. Let him use his legs to 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 uh, try to beat the pass rush. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think if he's in the game, they're going to want to be throwing the football. So we're going to look, we're going to look because Trevor Purdy did play last year. So obviously we expect, we expect a more comfortable Chubb Purdy this year, but I, there was some stuff that he did that looked very impressive to us. Yep. Now, like, Kev, what did you see from Chubba? I mean, I like he's athletic. He can get out of trouble. Oh my God! Jesus yeah. Christ! I forgot about that play. Yeah, don't do that, Chuba. Don't do that again. Oh no! Chuba's, Chuba's got the tools you want in a quarterback, right? He he's got that quick step. He can get out of the pocket. He keeps his eyes downfield. Um, I think we saw him be relatively accurate. I, I wouldn't say that's his biggest strength, but I don't think that it's a a complete minus at this point. Um, I I just think I think he's got a he's a mold that can be a really good quarterback one day. And so yeah. um, to to get to learn under McKenzie Milton and get to compete with McKenzie Milton, um, I think there's a lot to pick up there. I'm interested in your thoughts, and I was just thinking about this now. Let's say McKenzie Milton does get hurt. God forbid. That's not what we want. Do you still keep Jordan Travis in the offense as like a skill guy? And then is Chubba Purdy – your your starting quarterback or is Jordan Travis your starting quarterback? What would you guys prefer? Uh, I mean, I uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it. Well, first of all, <laughs> it was so, a good question. <laughs> yeah, what's the extent of the injury for for uh, McKenzie? How long is he going to be out for? You know, that kind of deal. Is he getting back in a couple of weeks? Is he done for the year? I think like two, three, two two to three week injury, maybe like a bad ankle sprain. Then I'm or probably something. then I'm probably going with Chuba because it's going to allow me to keep my offense theme closest to what McKenzie's going to be running. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, Jordan, I think you're you're getting a little more into the which is not a it's not it's not like a huge deal in Norvell's offense because all he does is initiate the, the quarterback read portion of things um which is a simple tag for him. Mhm. What uh, what about you, Kevin? What do you think? Oh, that's a good throw. No, I, I think that's, that's one nice. of the reasons why fans should be ex- extra excited about McKenzie Milton is not only is he a really good college quarterback. I think at his best, he was what we hope Chuba can be like. You know, he mm-hmm. he has the he has the agility and the quickness, but he's still someone you trust to throw the ball downfield. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think Chuba is a similar mold to McKenzie Milton, and I think that's why you bring in a McKenzie Milton. And I think that's also why um if mckenzie god forbid were to have some sort of season engine injury chubb is the guy you put in there because um it it keeps you from having to make wholesale changes i think yeah. you're still gonna rotate in jordan travis probably probably jordan travis gets a little bit more time um than he would otherwise sure. but uh yeah and I, I think realistically nothing really changes you just put in Chubba Purdy and you keep operating like you want to man you can even see he even runs like he's he's a bigger version of Mackenzie Milton obviously isn't he he, he's very similar running style right like powerful a little bit more agile than you think it the only play Warren Thompson ever made yeah man that was a good (laughs) RIP (laughs) RIP the Warren Thompson era at Florida State uh thank you Armwood High School so yeah, the more I looked at Chubba's tape, I, because 2020 was such just, just a just a dumpster Cluster. toilet of a year on the field. I forgot a lot of those plays. Those are some good plays. Yeah, it's Chubba, Chubba's feet and his and his head have got to slow down. I mean, that's the thing for him. He's got to process information quicker. Um, but but it, 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 by processing quicker, his body's going to slow down. I know it sounds kind of backwards, but. When his feet slow down, I think we're going to see him really kind of take off. Right. Once the game starts to slow mm-hmm. down from him, like a Chubba Purdy with anticipation and uh, 
like you said, just a, just an overall kind of calmness that comes from experience at quarterback. That's a kid to be excited about for the future. I feel like he's almost kind of like the, the overlooked quarterback recruit. It's, it's we were looking ahead to like Luke Altmeyer when he was a commit. We're looking ahead to the 2022 Nico Marchio and probably another quarterback that they're going to get, but Joe pretty good quarterback of the future, man. The tools are there. The tools are there, especially learning from McKenzie Milton. Yeah. So, uh, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Recruiting's on fire. We're on fire. Spring ball's coming up. I feel good. I look like a million bucks. I brought the mustache back. I'm not playing around, guys. Trey, you um, always look like a million bucks. You are so nice. Oh, <laughs> you, got the best, you got the best lying group of co-hosts. Uh, I feel good. Any final thoughts before we wrap up this um, legendary episode of the Triple Option? Um, I would say... I. I think that if it was personally me, um, McKenzie Milton would, would be the starter, but I, I would not discount either one of the other two options that we talked about um, making a, a real run at it. And I think it's the first time that we've seen legit quarterback competition yeah, in Tallahassee in, in a, probably five years, you know? And so um, that's always, that's always a good thing. People want to harp on two quarterback systems, but, um, I, I think having that competition, having those options is a way to, is a way forward compared to what we have been yeah. dealing with. <laughs> I agree with that. It's something to be excited about. I did. We, we know McKenzie Milton was brought here for a reason, but it's going to be an open competition, You're right? Iron sharpens iron. Let me just get a nice little cool cliche out there, but, uh, I'm Jim. excited, man. It'll be good. Now we're not... <laughs> We don't expect the team to be world beaters next year, but I think we're going to see competent quarterback play no matter who's behind center. Do you guys expect them to come out of spring name and a starter? I do. I do. And you expect it to be Milton? I do at this point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm excited be. to see him. I'm excited to see what he looks like. Yeah, me too. But I like, mean, it's, but... we, we've seen workout videos and we've seen. Oh, him. God. Yeah. Just is he limpy here? Two but he's dead. Seconds he's cut. Dead. Yeah. Power clean in there, but then like he pulled his leg hair there, so I, he's ouch, and then but he's also like jumping on a box. Like who knows? It's all so cloak and dagger at this oh, yeah. point, dude. Uh but I'll be interested. I mean, you name a starter in spring, you gotta feel confident. We we've, we've seen we've seen film of him running the UCF scout team, and I thought he looked good. Yeah. Um I'll be interested, but yeah, I do think that I do think they're gonna name a starter in spring, but even then, you're gonna see the other two guys on the field too. For some reason, just you're gonna see them. They're all three of them are gonna play in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a question of how much. Yeah, I tend to agree. And speaking of how much, show how much you love us, how much you love the triple option by going to the X's and Knowles YouTube page. Like, subscribe, set up notifications, do all the good stuff. You're going to see all of our videos. You're going to see all Kevin Silla videos, all of Adam's videos when he decides to get behind the Telestrator. It's just, and it's free. It's the best content in the entire world. We're the best show in the entire world. <laughs> uh, Literally, we're in Japan. Let's go. We're in Japan, <laughs> baby. That's right. The land of the rising sun and the triple option. That's all we do. Sushi talk. Let's go. Mount Fuji. I love Japan. Um, man, I'm fired up. Okay. Well, so now I don't have to rant in my basement anymore. I'm going to end this guys. Thank you for watching this episode of the triple <laughs> option. Please share it with your friends. We're going to be back. We're going to do, uh, we had fun. That first live stream was pretty fun. Uh, we're oh, going yeah. to fix the bugs on that. So thanks for hanging with us there. We're going to do live mailbags. We're gonna just we're just gonna just pound spring football to death. Every single football film we get, we're gonna <laughs> all the big roll you can get. We're gonna zabruder it all. We're gonna I'm gonna break down every frame. It's gonna be <laughs> awesome. Uh, we got a spring game. Hopefully the spring game goes on, dude. We'll break down the spring game. I'm excited about that. And then once the off season hits, we'll go into the Noel vault. We'll do whatever you want. We'll get freaky. We'll get freaky here on the triple option. We don't care. So as always. Be active in our comment section, please. Um, and give us suggestions because we love you and you love us. And with that, have a wonderful night, Noel fans. Chop, chop, chop. See you soon.